Okay, here we are with the Alpha 9500 um, linear amplifier by RF Concepts, and we're going to go through the um, power on and tune up process of this amplifier. Uh, first of all, there's several on conditions. The first one just turns on the electronics, as you can see. The um, uh, display here lights up, and several LEDs on the, the display light up. Uh, the nice thing is that this will allow you to um, use the power meter um, that's built into this unit or SW, where you can measure SWR or forward power or PEP power of your exciter as it passes through the linear. The second on condition applies high voltage and starts to warm up the um, amplifier tube and that's a three minute process and um, so I'll press that second on button and what you hear are the stepper motors and the blower come to life. The stepper motors then uh, tune the um, uh, tune and load capacitors of the tank circuit and uh, they go to some default condition when it goes to the power up uh, 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 position of this amplifier. You'll notice then there's a countdown timer up here and that counts down from three minutes and tells you how long you have to wait before you can switch to the actual operate mode. Um, Okay, we'll see here there are various meter functions. We can measure the forward um, power, the plate um, uh, current, which of course right now is in zero. The plate voltage um, at rest is uh, 3550 volts. The grid current, which should be zero. SWR, which is meaningless actually because there's no power going through the, the circuit. And then a fault number and it's in this fault position that we actually get this um, countdown timer. But if something were to go um, out of tune or out of adjustment so that there may be a threat to the final amplifier tube, uh, there are one of many faults that the microprocessors detect and it shuts down the, um, either takes the uh, final offline or shuts the linear down altogether depending upon the severity of the fault. And you can then go to this window, press the button, and see which fault it was so you can take some kind of remedial action. Uh, we also then have a dimmer switch which allows us to set the brightness of the LEDs. Uh, a second uh, SND position which really isn't in use at this uh, time. Uh, PEP which allows you to measure your output in peak envelope power and then also deliver to the antenna, DEL, uh, which is uh, what we'll be using here today. On the other side we have a band switch, uh, 160 meters through 10 meters, and each of the bands are divided up into five segments, or, or there are five segments, each band is divided up into segments. Uh, some bands, for example 40, only is divided up into two segments. So depending on the size of the band and so forth, you'll have different numbers of segments um, that you really have to deal with. Then we have a uh, memory um, a set of buttons where we have a, a DEF for these I believe are the default or defined uh, conditions at the factory and what they did at, at RF Concepts was to take each linear and load it into an, a resistive 50 ohm load and then save those uh, settings that would be the tune and the load settings of the tank circuit uh, into memory so if you have uh, um, an antenna that's a, a purely resistive load at 50 ohms, they should be identical to uh, this predefined set of uh, settings that come from the factory. There's also a user 1 or 2, and uh, I have already preset my user 1 uh, memories for my loop antenna, which I use outside. And what I'm going to do tonight is to set the user number 2 uh, uh, conditions for a vertical antenna that I have in the backyard. So we'll be uh, using uh, that position tonight for our um, tuning process. Then there's the auto uh, tune button. So when this light is lit, uh, the microprocessors will sense uh, various parameters uh, in the amplifier and adjust the tune and the load capacitors to give you the best um, uh, tuning solution. And uh, when these stepper motors are in action, 
changing the positions of the capacitors, you'll see the red lights flicker uh, on or off, uh, depending upon whether it's uh, tuning the capacitor left or right, and uh, oftentimes they exchange between tune and load, and, and it's very fast, however, you'll see them just flicker very shortly and then it's all done. Also on the back side of the amplifier there are four antenna connectors and we can choose between those connectors with this front panel switch. I currently have my antennas coming in through port number four and uh, you can define which port you uh, wish to use. Uh, it comes from the factory preset for port number four and I've uh, uh, left mine in that condition here. So uh, I see we've counted down to, th I've talked for more than three minutes. <laughs> And uh, so now I can actually press the operate button here and you'll see the green light come on, meaning that uh, now I have, um, as soon as I apply excitation to the amplifier from the exciter, I would then uh, uh, be amplifying that signal and, and putting a signal on the air. So the first thing we'll do is uh, get set up to operate on um, uh, 80 meters and I'm going to go down to 3.550, which is the midpoint of the first segment uh, defined in the manual. And we'll go there, we'll tune it up, and then we'll, we'll go through how this uh, tuning process uh, works. So uh, stand by while I get the exciter ready. Okay, now I've, um, I have a tuner on my vertical antenna, so I'm uh, providing the um, uh, linear here with a one-to-one -one match to that uh, to that antenna, which is the way I would be using it uh, in a practical application. So now I've got it set for uh, if I put it on the defined, uh, uh, I should be fairly close to that because my tuner should offer this a, a reasonably close to 50 ohm resistive load. And uh, notice it already switched as soon as I tuned the exciter, it switched down here to segment one from segment five and we're all ready to go. So I'm going to hit the exciter and uh, and then I'm going to increase the level of excitation and you should see the power then come on up to, uh, and I'm going to bring it up to about 1400 watts thereabouts. First we'll um, I'll put it back online into the operate position and then I'll apply the, um, uh, the uh, current from the exciter. There you saw the uh, auto tuner kick into action. As we increase the uh, the level, we've got about 1,450 watts. We're getting a fairly good gain. Um, our grid current's a little uh, is still good in the uh, in the green position, about 50 milliamps, and uh, our SWR is actually almost is one-to-one, -one, almost non-existent there. <laughs> so we'll st uh, set her back here in the uh, forward position again. And so that was tuning it with the, the uh, settings that were defined at the factory. But I want to uh, make a set of preset conditions for my vertical antenna. So I'm going to go over here to um, user-defined options number two, leave it in auto, and then I'm going to lower my exciter again and then bring it up slowly to about 1450 watts and uh, when it does find a tuning solution then I'm going to memorize that. I'll hit the save button and save those settings in uh, segment number one. So here we go with the uh, exciter in that position. Okay, there we are, and um, I've got 1,480, 90 watts, something like that, and uh, um, it didn't require actually any uh, tuning uh, going on here at all, but uh, I can save that by simply pressing then the save button, and you'll see the yellow light blink once, which indicates that the settings have been saved in the, uh, uh, in the computer here, in, in the linear amplifier. Okay, that's set. And uh, so that's done. And the next time I come to use this antenna, if I come down into this segment of the band, uh, the linear will know that it'll switch right away to segment number one if I'm in that 3.5 megahertz range. 
um, and it will preset the tune and load capacitors to that condition so I should be fairly close to a final tuning solution without um, having to do a lot of hunting around so to speak so that's how easy it is I'll proceed now and go up uh, to the next next segment which is 3.65 megahertz and we'll repeat the process I'll put it on standby while I uh, again go up in frequency and then I'll tune the antenna with the antenna tuner and we'll be back to um, memorize those settings again okay there I am Eat each time I do this, I'm going to reduce the drive from my exciter to the linear so that I don't hit it with a high uh, level of excitation. And then I'll bring it up slowly to the power that I am interested in uh, uh, tuning it to. We'll put it in the operate position. I'll step on the foot switch, and we should see um, some tuning occurred. And uh, notice we're in segment number two now, and I'm going to increase the uh, level of drive okay there we are about uh, 1470 watts thereabouts uh, close to a kilowatt we're running about a gain of 30 approximately everything's in pretty good condition so I will then press the save button here again and now I've saved that tune and load um, setting in the second position which is a segment centered on 3.65 megahertz I'll put it in standby go back up to 3.75 megahertz and repeat the process okay here we are ready for the third segment now I'll press the uh, button and put it in operate mode I've uh, reduced the drive I'll press the button, it goes through a tuning process, and now I can increase the drive level to bring it up to the desired power. Here we go, about 470 uh, watts thereabouts. Our gain is um, 35, 40, um, 30, 32, something like that. Uh, pretty decent, and uh, we're all set to go. So I'll do a save of those settings for segment number three. Okay, we'll go now to uh, the fourth segment, which is 3.85 megahertz, and I will uh, put it in standby and we'll repeat the process again. Okay, I'm going to uh, tune the exciter to the antenna, but notice as soon as I put, the, uh, um, my, uh, put down the foot switch and uh, turn on the transmitter, this will jump from segment three to segment four almost instantaneously. Uh, it just takes a millisecond or two to sense the frequency and then make the adjustment in the linear. This, uh, this linear's uh, processor is just uh, lightning fast and all of these changes occur very, very rapidly. Okay, here we are. We're ready now to put her back in the operating position. I will step on the foot switch, apply some drive, and we'll bring it back up to the appropriate uh, power level. Here we are, 1,400, or 1,480 plus watts. Um, good gain, low grid current, uh, looks very good. So once again, we'll press the save button so the settings for segment number four have been uh, made. We'll, we'll go ahead and do the final 3.95 megahertz. Uh, I'm not going to put that on tape. It's uh, really a repeat of what we've already done four times. But that literally is the process for setting up uh, each uh, band of the amplifier. Once that's done, you don't have to go back and do it again. Uh, the beauty of it is that when you um, move to a particular antenna, to a, a particular part of the band, uh, the amplifier will remember where you are uh, and apply the uh, tune and load capacitor settings for that segment, for that antenna, and uh, it reduces the amount of time it takes to um, transmit and it reduces the amount of hunting for a, a tuning solution uh, here and, and makes it a very quick process. 
a beautiful, a beautiful piece of equipment, and it works uh, very, very nicely. I hope this uh, helps you with, uh, it gives you an idea of how the tuning process works or helps you with your initial setup.